Okay, welcome back guys to another video. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say thank you so much for the support on the previous video. It's turned out to be my best video um, by far in terms of um, how, it's, how it's achieved, uh, excluding the fractal vice because that was, that was like already a trend that I just jumped on. This is like my own thing and that feels pretty good. So thank you all for the support and your positive comments. Now this is the build video for the tapping station. Um, it's going to be kind of unscripted, like the latter half of that, because I find that's just the easiest way to get across all the info without having to spend, uh, you know, 20 hours working on some tutorial video. But anyways, to begin with, the base. Oh, no, one other thing. I be, I'll be telling the diameters and, like, the, the, the form of the hardware, but I won't be telling the exact dimensions. That'll be on screen. Um, so just keep that in mind. So, yeah. To begin with the base you can either have a base like this which lets you move it around or you can bolt it directly to a bench like I showed in the last video um, I find the base is what I use most of the time because it lets me move it in and out of my assembly area but you know that's up to you the base has this length of 10 millimeter rod and some feet which are purely to make space for this underneath I saw a couple of comments about an all-in-one solution and you totally could do that um, Kind of what I like. I, I've kind of done that before with the old milling mach milling machine. It's it was a toy, but anyways. Um, but yeah, you could totally make like a base with the drawers you know, incorporated into it. But really, there's not much to it. It's a piece of wood with a hole. So moving up from there, we're going to start with the main column. Um, I'm going to have some pieces already half assembled like this, um, just to speed the video up. The column is made up of this round bottom piece, these two identical support pieces, four bolts and two coupler nuts. So the coupler nuts are like this, they allow you to connect two bolts in the middle. Um, and I use them for the purpose here of being able to compress all the parts together without having to have like individual embedded nuts, if that makes sense. So. Um, Two coupler nuts, they get embedded in either side, and two bolts in the bottom. Next up, I have a length of 19mm tube, which goes in the middle. There's also a printed version of this, but the tube allows me to just compress the whole thing a little more. Gives it a bit more strength, a bit more firmness. Um, there's also a spacer that then goes in the tube. So this whole assembly goes straight over your spine, like that. Next up, we have a similar assembly that is the overarm. So again, two coupler nuts, four bolts. And that just slots on there like this. Nice and tightly. We'll then take two more bolts, put them in, and then we're just gonna fasten them down. Obviously, you don't have to use an impact driver. I'm just trying to speed the video up. That's really all there is to the overarm structure. It's just four bolts, each piece, two couple of nuts. Um, for the front, you have these two pieces here. Again, with two more bolts. And you have your linear bearing. So, put this facing me. So, once you've got that tightened on like that, go ahead and loosen it again, just slightly. So that you can then loosen it enough to insert your linear bearing, and then go ahead and tighten it back up again. Just like that. That will hold that in there plenty firm enough. Now, before, you may notice I haven't tightened this on yet. Before we do that, we're gonna install our chuck. We need these components here for that. Um, and you can't do that on the base, it's too tall. So this is a ER16 chuck, a length of eight millimeter rod, and it's got one hole drilled in it for the handle. 
That's all there is to it. Okay, with that set up, uh, we can then go and add a washer. Okay, you then go and add the washer, I don't know why that took so long, and a bolt. You then have the basic station. Um, obviously, you can use it like this if you just want to hold parts in your hand, but that's not um, how I've ever used it. I always use it with the vice. So that's what we're going to assemble next. So let's move this over here. Get that out of the way. The next assembly we have here is the vice swivel. Swivel and linear holder mechanism that has the latch. So the latch component here has four M2 bolts that go into this middle part, but this final one has a piece of two millimeter brass rod going through it. It does not have a bolt because it needs to be flush on either side in order to work. So four M2 bolts and a piece of two millimeter rod. <coughs> Moving on around, we have a single M3 screw and that's just going into the plastic in the bottom. Obviously this hole in the middle is about 3.4 millimeters, so it's a nice loose fit. Um, and this screw just goes into the plastic in the bottom. To connect these two pieces, there's a single M4 bolt running through it. And that's really all there is to that. It's a quite a simple little assembly. Um, it shouldn't really give you much issue putting together. Next up, We'll go over one of the vices. Again, these are using the coupler nut technique. Um, there's these holes on mine, which won't be on yours. These are from an older version when I was being lazy. Um, but again, so coupler nuts in the middle, and they sandwich the whole thing together. So, I'm going to take our jaw. Slight, wait, nope. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to take our jaw. I'm going to put a 5mm bolt into this hole in the bottom and we're then going to slide it in just like that. Next up we take this plate here, you'll see it's got a little mating piece which slots in there like that and we'll take this. This is a 5mm bolt and the head um, slots around this gear here. I've glued it on, you don't have to, it's up to you, but we're going to take that, oops, we're going to take that, and we're just going to thread that, it wants to cooperate, we're going to thread that through here, just like this. Awesome. Okay, so now we're left with this setup here. I'm going to take the next two pieces of the vise and two bolts. So this gear, this gear here is two pieces. I've glued the head on. In here you'll see there is another M4 bolt that has been embedded and that acts as the shaft for the gear. So taking the gear and putting it in this piece it then slides onto the shaft and we're able to take our M4 bolts insert them and then tighten them down just like that and just like that your mini vise has been created and can slot into here Okay, 
And just like that, that's really all there is to it. The other vise is the same process. And the storage case doesn't really have much to it. This drawer uses two M2 bolts. These use nothing. In terms of the jaws for the fractal vise, I'll direct you to the timestamp on the original fractal vise build video rather than putting them here. I feel like not many people will make these, but if you want to, um, there'll be a link in the description with a timestamp to the tutorial on these since it's quite lengthy and doesn't really need to be here. So, um, yeah, I think that's all there is to it. I hope that made sense. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Um, but as always, thanks for watching and happy making.